Difference in our community. Subale. 102.3 Radio Vida La Estación Diferente. We are live on a Tuesday. Dr. Brown in the house. Yes, yes. It seems like it's been forever. It does. Hey, Amen. It it's been a it's been a couple weeks where yes. I, I've been taking care of a lot of personal business. And uh so far so good. Everything going well. Man, I was wondering. Yeah, everything, everything going well, everything taking, being taken care of. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where discipleship. Not only, not only do I take discipleship very personal. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I want people to know out there. I mean, Dr. Brown disciples many people. Amen. Amen. True. True. And uh, and not only, but it's been something that in my life I'm doing as well as uh, I take uh, personal discipleship. You know, with. With people from all kinds of areas of life. Yes. And now I'm doing a personal discipleship with my son. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it, it, it takes time. And, and uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been able, I've been blessed to be able to spend some time with him. And, uh, and just guiding him into that right path so that he can just take off, take off flying into that new destination of amen, life. Amen, amen. Amen. And embrace that new life. But um, you're live on 102.3 Radio Vida La Estación Diferente. Number one show. So, little by Justin Thompson, newest member of New Life Church. Amen. Justin Thompson. Amen. And, and we had uh, five more new members this past Sunday. Wonderful. And this next Sunday and these next two couple Sundays, we will probably be adding another five. So, glory to God glory, there glory. to New Life Church is Amen. expanding. It's growing. It's alive. So, little by Sergio de Alas. A little by Chris Antone. Chris yes. Antone, man. He preaching, man. He's doing some of those Chris videos is. out there, he and um, as the hey amen. I'm I'm ready to see Hood TV back, Doctor Brown. Are you are you ready to see Hood TV? Yes. I want to see Hood TV back, man. Uh, so uh, uh, pretty soon, I'm hoping Chris and I can be working together amen. and bring Hood TV back where it belongs here in the hood. Hallelujah. In the neighborhood, hey, amen. Yeah, so let's yeah, about yeah. Chris Antone. Yes, uh, so little bit of Mark Ragsdale. Hey, Mark Ragsdale, yes. man. Hey, 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 Mark. Man, that that is a miracle, a fresh miracle. Mm. He's never online. He's never. Uh, he's not a socialite. Oh, oh yes, I know, <laughs> I know, Mark. Yes, hallelujah. But uh, we see Mark Ragsdale there online. Uh, so little bit of uh, uh, Dr. Brown, of Super course, hey, he's Mark. right here. Uh, Justin Thompson says, "Good morning, Pastor Beto. Good morning, Dr. Brown." Good Past morning. Pastor Carwitha is on board here as well. I want to remind you guys that we have a very, very easy way. Uh, our our New Life Church app is about to be revealed. Amen. Here in the next week or two, I'm really working very, very hard. Uh, I've been working very hard for this app. And it's going to be one of the most amazing apps in, in church history. I quiz them. 
Hey, why not, right? I'm really working hard at this, Dr. Brown. And, Amen. And I mean, it's really out of my uh, comfort. comfort zone. Amen. But uh, we have a very easy, but until it is revealed, it's going to be revealed with, with everything you ever wanted in an app for a church. Amen. It's going to have all kinds of things. It's going to have all kinds of teachings, videos, interaction. And, and, and also it makes it very easy to give. So I, I know that uh, Pastor Corwitha uh, posted a post this morning. And if you ever want to give to New Life Church in Kenya, which, you know, right. hey, why wouldn't you want to give, right? Amen. Where he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ out there. We have a very easy way to give, not only there, but also to New Life Church and the youth, et cetera, et cetera. And all you got to do is type this. All you got to do is type, you, you type New Life, let me uh -huh. see, New Life, one word. New life, one word, space, give. Amen. And you type that to 77977. Amen. So that's all you got to do is you type that, and, it, and then it'll take you to your to the place where you can put in your information. And once you, once you give, you can do it a recurrent. You can do it recurrently. You can do it once a month. Uh, you can do it however you choose to give it, and you don't have to put in the information no more. Now it's something that is set on there, so something very, very easy to give. So, saludito para Pastor Corweta. Francisco, Pastor Francisco Linares from Baja California. God bless you. Samuel Noriega, Pastor Dan Alaman, running for city council as well. He says, Subele as well. Uh, Michael Barrera and of course Urania in the house here this afternoon. Praise you are listening. Uh, Lydia Sanchez, God bless you. Another bless new, you. new, new member of New Life Church, man. Amen. We're busting out the seams and uh, God is good, man. Uh, all I can say is God is good. Amen. And uh, I'm just very excited for what God is going to do. Remember, finish what you started. Uh, we're going to talk about that here today. On the Live Fire Radio Show, we're going to be talking about counting the cost, mm. sitting down and cut, counting the cost, yeah. the price yep. of a disciple. That's You're cool. listening to the Live Fire Radio Show, number one show here in the DFW. Dr. Brown, say hello to the people. Praise the Lord, everybody. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Brace yourselves. Hallelujah. For the Spirit of the Lord is in the cabin today. Hallelujah. We're expecting the Lord, amen, to bust out today, amen, as we talk about this subject that pastor says, count up the cost, a good one, hallelujah, and we pray that you are ready, amen, to receive the word of the Lord. Super day, everyone. God Absolutely. bless you. Absolutely. Absolutely. 102.3, Radio Vida, La Estación Diferente, 95.5, Ebenezer Radio, in Nogales, Veracruz, 99.7 FM, in Guanajuato, Mexico. Saludito para Guatemala, 87.7 uh, in Guatemala. Sal La Poderosa, saludito para 99, uh, 91.9 FM in the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, here in the next couple weeks, we got to pay our yearly dues that we do for the radio station. So uh, it, it's a hefty amount, but uh, but God supplies, man. God supplies. We do pay this, this yearly uh, to be on the... I don't know what's it called, F FCC, FCC something, Federal something, but it's something we do yearly, and it's coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So just pray with us that Amen. the money's already there, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, but God always provides when you are doing the work of the Lord. Saludito para Consuelo, Lela Lopez, saludito para Josie, Fabian Martinez, Margaret Knight, God bless you, blessings to everybody, yes, she thanks. says. You are listening to the number one show on the midday. Hola, ma. Súbele. You're listening to the number one 5 p.m. radio show with Pastor Bethel on 102.3 FM, 91.9 FM, and 92.1 FM. Stay tuned to interviews with people that make a difference in our community, as well as the Word of God by Pastor Bethel. Súbele. to get uh, the short end of the stick. 
in terms of the investment that's put into them. But I think it should be the opposite because they are our future. A lot of things that you learn from sports. When you're the father of four daughters, this becomes not just a belief, it doesn't become a challenge, but it becomes a passion and it becomes a mission. <laughs> because this is the world that they are going to be growing up in. And I want to make sure that they're growing up in a world better than the one that we are currently living in, that's for sure. But you gotta look to it as what can really pique the interest of a kid. What piques their interest is the curiosity of, can I do that? It's just basic things, like a kid starts out, can't dribble with her left, and then two weeks later, she's much better at it. That does a lot for self-esteem, does a lot for inner confidence. So that's where the original idea of Mamba League was, uh, was conceived. Watching their camaraderie, watching their bond, watching them grow together, it's extremely rewarding. My hope is that through sport, they understand that whatever discipline they decide to go into, whether it is volleyball or basketball, or whether it's being an accountant or being a writer or whatever the case may be, the same principles apply. The discipline, the dedication, the attention to detail, the unselfishness, right? All that stuff is there. And so hopefully um, they grew up understanding that message. One on two point three Radio Vida, la estación diferente. You're listening to the number one show, the Live Fire Radio Show here this afternoon with Dr. Brown and Pastor Beto in the house. We're going to be talking about sitting down and counting the cost. How important is it to count the cost before we move forward? So will it. Religión o sacrificios Tus obras 
no te llevarán al cielo para llegar ahí hay que esforzarse dejar a un lado la pena y el miedo y a Jesucristo tu vida entregarle no quiero imaginar dónde despertarás cuando cierres tus ojos en este lugar Querrás volver el tiempo y volver a empezar Pensarás que es un sueño y querrás despertar Pero allí ya no podrás comenzar otra vez Tú tuviste tu tiempo y tu tiempo se fue Y quizás tú recuerdes también mi canción cuando yo te decía que era necesario darle el corazón. The best Christian Tejano music and interviews with people that are making a difference in our community. Subale! One hundred two point three Radio Vida, la estación diferente. We're live and we're back, stronger than ever, 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 ever. Muchos saludos. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon to the number one show in the afternoons. Dr. Brown, always, always awesome to have you in the studio. We got so much to talk about. Uh, so little time to do it in. Uh, that's why we're getting we're getting here very very quickly. Let me let me raise Dr. Brown here a little bit right there. There you go, Dr. Brown. Amen. And let me move this over here, kind of like in the middle. There we go. We'll raise ourselves about right there. How about how's that right there? There we go. Everybody will see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Everybody can see now a little bit better, Dr. Brown. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of people on tune on board here this afternoon. We got uh, uh, Pastor Cor with us says, Jesus the Nazareth is always good. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, Margaret Knight says, Alleluia. She says, Praise him. Uh, Brother Mont, God bless you, is watching. An uh, awesome, awesome man of God, uh, worshiper of the Lord. Rick Melton in the house. Amen. Leslie Jefferson Sharp. Says, good afternoon, blessing to you all. Amen. Amen. This morning I came in and the internet was very, very slow, Dr. Brown. Yeah, it's uh, very slow. So you may be having an issue there. Yeah. Uh, I'm on direct, I'm on direct internet and uh, we we pay a, a little bit extra for this internet that goes into this computer because of the, of the streaming that has to go out. Uh, we used to have horrible issues uh, before we purchased this internet uh, and we have had Zero. Look at the, if you look at this number right here, Doctor Brown. It says drop frames. This, zero. yeah, zero. That number used to be up in the thirties to the fifties, and per hour. Wow. And that's how many times they'd be dropping and dropping and dropping. So, so the people be watching their phones and they think it's the show. And so for sure, I know that this is not the show. So if you're having issues, it be it, I guarantee you, it's your internet. Right. So because I know this, this, this the internet here. Right. Now, sometimes to solve that, Dr. Brown, and any of you that's ever had issues like that, uh, we have my Wi-Fi, but I don't have my password. Uh, <laughs> I got to go back there and get it. Maybe I'll get it here in a little break. But um, but what you can do, you can turn off your phone, turn it back up, and then we'll see if if it, if it'll grab if it'll grab that uh, the, the the password. I mean the the internet. But uh, uh, yesterday, uh, you know, we're not a political show. We're not a a current event shows, uh, be w but we are a show located here in the DFW. And uh, for the past year, and especially the past few weeks, I mean, we've had uh, um, a case that's been hanging over everybody's head. And, uh, I mean, there was going to be no winners. I mean, no matter Amen. what happened, Amen. no matter what decision came about, Amen. there was going to be no winners in this decision. I guarantee Amen. you. Uh, both families are devastated That's this right. morning. That's Everybody's right. devastated. Yes. 
Amen. It could have gone in the opposite direction, yes. and both families would have still been devastated. Yes. Uh, it, w- it would have been a horrific day in the DFW. Yes. Uh, and let's just be honest. I mean, look, listen, we're human beings, mm-hmm. and uh, these two people have been sacrificed. Yes. Okay? These two people have been sacrificed. Let's yes. just be very honest. Nobody be willing to say that. But I'm willing to say it. And I agree. And you agree, Dr. Brown. Both of them have been sacrificed. So, uh, you know what? I mean, it's one of those things where, I mean, this case probably, probably should not have been, uh, should not have been uh, judged here in the DFW per se. Uh, You can argue that, but whatever you argue, it it already happened. Mm. The verdict is in. The punishment phase is coming in. Mm. Uh, we don't know what the punishment phase is going to come in, but it, it, it's it's a, it's a bloom. It's a blooming day. It's, it's it's a dark day in the DFW, and it goes to show uh, when politics get involved, when all these things get involved, man. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it brings division. We have a divided city. Yes. We have a divided DFW. Yes. And, and it's the enemy's plan. Uh, you know, yesterday we were at the fair, Dr. Brown, and what I noticed were, I mean, the, the police officers were an extra alert. You can tell. And you can tell that there was n- there was not as full as usual. Right. You know, because we've gone on, in the past yeah. in, on our church staff day, which was uh, which is always the, the, the first Tuesday of the fair. Right. And uh, so, I mean, th- this this year, obviously, you know, we missed you this year. Yeah, but uh, there. yeah, and but but uh, but uh, uh, you can tell there was a, it was different. Yeah, you know, and and even when when the verdict came in, and you can tell, you know, the the people watching. I'm pretty sure everybody's watching. I mean, everybody's on the internet, so everybody's watching. Uh, you can just tell the 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 unbelief. You know, some can say some people can say it was the, an unbelief. Some other people could have cheered it. I I don't think anybody in the right mind would have cheered it, uh, but it was just uh, just an, 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 uh, just one of those. Yeah, there sad. was no winners. It was sad. There was That's no it. winners. Amen. It was sad. So I think as the body of Christ, I mean, we we're praying for both families. That's it. I mean, we're praying for both families and 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 and, and the young man's uh, his mama, very a firm mama, huh? Yes. Wow, wow. what yes. a firm mother solid she is, lady. man. Solid, Amen. solid, 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 and also. Um, for 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 the other family as well, I mean these are these are the consequences of choices. At the end of the day, I mean uh, my son paid a price for his choice. You know I've paid a price for my choice, Doctor Brown. Yes. And we all pay prices for these choices we make, and and some choices we make uh, instantly, mm-hmm. some choices we make uh, counting the cost. Right. Amen. And uh, and the Bible is very clear about counting the cost mm. before we make any choice. Amen. And sometimes you don't have time, Dr. Brown, Come on. to count the cost. That's right. You know, and and I'm hoping that uh, as we move forward and we continue to teach the word of God. So little about David, Pastor David Shields Praise from, the Lord. yes, from 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 uh, care centers here in the DFW. Uh, just doing an amazing job and just loving the people Amen. of the DFW. Amen. Thank you so much. Handyman in the house. God bless you, Mr. Handyman. And, of course, um, William Silva, my dear friend from the Rio Grande Valley, so uh, a Purple Heart recipient. Amen. Thank you service. Of the Gulf War out there. I remember Hallelujah. back in the day, me and Wally, man. I used, we used to call him Wally, man. Uh, it, there was a time where me and Wally, uh, we were kind of, uh, we were we were we were we were against each other, and you know when you're in junior high, you know what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we ended up being uh, amazing friends, and we, I still consider him one of my best friends, Mr. Wally Silva, out there in the Rio Grande Valley um, mm-hmm. from South Padre Island. Man, what I'm going out there, Wally. Uh, Lord willing, I'm spending Thanksgiving in the Rio Grande Valley. I made, made it official. Amen. I made it official. Yeah, we made it official this Hallelujah. week. I put it on my calendar. Amen. So when I put it on my calendar, it's official. So uh, <laughs> we're heading out there, and uh, I'm not going to go work. I'm not going to go preach. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm going to keep to that so far. 
Uh, <laughs> there's something that pops up, but uh, you know, I can't say no. But uh, we're going out there for total relaxation. Praise the Lord. So, so I told my wife, yes, relaxation. She goes, you don't have nothing hitting, do you? Like, <laughs> we're not going out there because somebody asked you to pray. I said, no, not yet. <laughs> so I didn't make it very clear to her, but if something pops up or, or somebody... You know, whatever she goes, I know, I know. If if it does, you know, of course you're gonna go preach, of course. So, so we'll be out there in, in the real Grand Valley coming up the week of Thanksgiving. Lord willing, we're leaving Tuesday night, amen. And we're Lord willing coming back Sunday night. Amen. So uh, I I will be out of pocket for the Wednesday and the Sunday service. Uh, Bless you. Uh, yes, proud of you. Of the Thanksgiving, man. So <laughs> I'll be biting my nails uh, that week and stuff like that. But hey, man, we got an amazing staff here at New Life Church, Amen. and um, just Amen. amazing. We're growing. Uh, I can't wait for Brother Lalo Beltran coming up. He should be coming up here in the next in 2020. He'll yes. be he'll be our next uh, one of our next pastors I at that. New Life Church. Absolutely, I absolutely. That. But uh, but uh, what's going on in your life, Doctor Brown? Tell us. Praise the Lord. I know you've been busy. My <laughs> Lord. Look, been busy, brown, busy. Been man. busy. Well rounded. Amen. Balanced and grounded in everything. Amen. In the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We just grateful to the Lord for being able to minister to his people. Amen. Praise God. This uh new ser- series, of course, I'm in the eighth teaching on mind invasion. And uh I think I poked the bear on that one. <laughs> I have it been sure getting did. calls and and from every word that you can think of, and my name has just popped up to the top of the list. Amen. Amen. With people going through, Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's been uh, uh, one of my hearts, and it's uh, been on my heart, Amen, about that area that we need to become more mindful of. And the thing that I said, if our government, amen, has recognized that there is a problem, an uh, issue uh, with uh, the mental side of us and how it's been handled, yeah. where is the church? Yeah, amen. where's the church? We yeah. have the answer, amen. We deal with every area in society. Yes, we have some. Uh, as they say, church counselors, mm. but yet and still, that part of the church has been swept under the rug when Jesus has demonstrated he came to set the captives free, Absolutely. those that are bound in their mind. So that's one of the things that's been on my heart, uh, other than teaching and training different people. Uh, one of the young ministers did her first wedding, and yeah, I, I saw was, that. I was out there in the heat. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God to support her. I'm telling you, man, ma- do- doing a marriage ceremony out there in the summer heat is it- something else, man. It I'm, is. I've done that. I just did that a couple of weeks ago, and it was something else. You, I mean, is. you got to hold is. that. You got to hold that. That audience sometimes isn't very friendly. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> they want to get out. That, they want to exactly, get out. You know, exactly. So it was hot. It was very hot. Yeah. And but uh, yet and still, I saw how God moved and worked. Uh, this young lady followed instructions all the way from premarital counseling uh, and, uh, to the marriage. She did excellent. Amen. And we're just grateful unto the Lord for that. Some, uh, amen, even yours, that you have allowed us to uh, mentor to a certain extent yeah. uh, for your church. Some have been to the school. Yeah, amen. They tell you they went. Amen. And how they love the class. Oh, yeah, awesome, amen. awesome. The, Dr. Kemp is a awesome teacher and yes. she started out on kingdom i believe mm. uh that's where she's at right now i'm gonna amen. be there next month teaching. amen amen other than that next month this month i'm in marshall i'll be doing a, a mini conference on the altars amen amen with the pastors in the city of marshall texas awesome and, awesome awesome and their uh there are uh, ministers that minister in the area of the altar and prayer. So we'll be doing something in Marshall next month, and then we'll do it in uh, in uh, Tyler Yes. Uh, next month. So, amen. We're glad uh, uh, about what God is doing and stretching me to the next uh, place he has for me to go. Uh, 
uh, I am excited about that. Yes, Hallelujah. yes, yes. I am very excited about that. Let's give a shout out to Martin Enrique Montenegro Ramirez. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank God you. bless you. You, you want to try out that name, Dr. No. Brown? No, you want to go for it? Martin Enrique Montenegro, Montenegro Ramirez. Ah, Hallelujah. I did it pretty you did, Man, you did it very well, Hallelujah. Dr. Brown. My Lord. Praise Joseph Lord. Mendoza Ernesto Garcia. Abel Herrera coming back yes. home. Yes, is he? Yeah, he uh, he Praise he went he went to Houston for a season yes. and uh, he's coming home. Praise the Lord. He'll be home God this bless Sunday. You, Abel, we'll yes, be glad yes. to see you. Welcome. Yes, brother Sam in the house as well. Remember, you can call us in at 214-477-8983. We can talk about anything, anything. Yes, you got any questions? Be exciting. Any Amen. prayer requests? Prayer requests? Uh, anything you like to ask us? Uh, go for it. You know, I, I I've been talking about. Um, sitting down and counting the cost, and and this That's is a good. this is a word for all of us. Yes, I mean there there, there there's none of us that could say you know what I've never sat down. I mean I always sit down and count the cost. You know mm -hmm. I'm I'm a very uh, emotions on my sleeve kind of go kind of guy. You know, and, and I always preach mindset, mindset. I always preach mm -hmm. a renewing of your mind. I always Amen. preach transformation. Amen. I always preach word of God, the, cr the mind of Christ. I yes. mean, it's all about serving, ministry, yes. ministry. Hallelujah. We basically, New Life Church is a school of ministry, Amen. basically. You come to New Life Church, you are going to learn how to minister. That's good. You know, Salito para Norma Sanchez, God bless you. Uh, we are not a sitting in the pew kind of church. Uh, yes. and there's some that choose to do that. That that's fine. That's great. Hey, God bless you. Amen. Uh, but we always give opportunity for people to move forward in their gifts. You know, Amen. we we teach passion. We that's teach good. give. We teach purpose. We teach the will of God. And of course, you come into a total peace with God. And that is where you want to be. You want to be exactly. at a total peace with God, knowing that you're you're where you're supposed to be, and not necessarily, Doctor Brown is the peace of God will come with no difficulties. That is true. You know, it's, it's not going to come with with no difficulties. And uh, I, I believe Isaiah 41, uh, verse 10, I was teaching this last night in our men's and women's discipleship, which we hold every Tuesday night at 730 in Building 7, Room 701. And yesterday I had the opportunity to have the men and the women in one class. Uh. And... And that's what we do once a month. That's I bring great. in the men and the women, and and uh, you know, I mean, I, I I could touch on a on a on a subject, but I I just I don't do subjects unless it pops up. But we're we're ju we just went into the Word of God, and I was teaching them about affirmation. Wow, you know about how as a child, we're all looking for that affirmation. Uh -huh. We're also always looking for that affirmation from our parents, Amen. A and it leads us to search for affirmation. You know, if, if you're if you're a young lady, and you never were affirmed by your daddy, or maybe you were abandoned by your daddy, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure he didn't mean to abandon you, but the fact is that he's not there. Yes. So in your mind, that creates abandonment issues. Come on. And you grow up to be a young lady that is always looking for affirmation from a man mm. you know and of course you go on to make some bad decisions in your life you know and hope i mean you know thank god thank god uh and, and what i teach and i say thank god that you come back to the lord but i always teach that your affirmation comes from god that's right you know we must learn how to be affirmed by god and then of course i was telling them about jesus coming from galilee to the jordan and the, 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 the heavens opened, John baptized Jesus, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove. He was empowered, he was affirmed, but then he was tested. Amen. You know, Absolutely. he was tested. He was tested, but really he was, he was uh, tempted by Satan. Amen. It was a temptation by Satan in all the three faces, in the kingdom area, in the in the in the in the uh, turning the the stone into bread area, you know, and of course he he was able to submit to God and he, because he was God obviously, and he, it was a submission, and then of course uh, he was able to resist the devil how with the word of God, Amen. knowing that that's the way you get affirmed. But the Bible says in Isaiah forty one ten because what we're talking about is counting the cost, sitting down 
counting the cost, Amen. especially, oh, Lord, in, in, in the ministry, mm. in the ministry. Mm. Li listen, how important is it, Dr. Brown, mm. to sit down and count the cost? Because sometimes, you know, we all make these mistakes, right? Hey, we'll be there, we'll be there, we'll be there. Right. And then, you know, you just like, you know what, man, I'm too busy for this, man. Right. There's just no way I, I, I can do this. I can't give you my 100%. Uh, I, and, and you know what? Sometimes those things are understood. But I think as we as we grow in the ministry, we got to learn how to sit down and count the cost. You know, Dr. Brown always, 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 any time she tells you she a yes or a no, she sits down and counts the cost. Amen. But I'm pretty sure in, in some time of your life, there was a time in your life where it's like, go, let's yes. go. Yes. And that's why we've learned yes. to sit down and count the cost. Right. And, and, and when you are in a place doing the will of God and you are in complete peace of God, it doesn't mean that there won't be no difficulties. Right. As a matter of fact, the difficulties that you're going through, all it is is a test. But I think many times what we do, Dr. Brown, is we switch ponds real quick. Hmm. We switch rivers real quick. We switch positions real quick. We go from one place to another, to another, to another. And then you ask yourself, how come I ain't got no followers? Hmm. Or how come nobody's following me as I'm following Christ? Well, because you're, I posted on, on Facebook. I'm going to see if I can pronounce this. Um, God is not a schizophrenic. No. But God is omnipresent. Yes. That means he's everywhere. He's everywhere. But he's not schizophrenic. No. <laughs> scattered and here and, yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, so, so we need to stop being schizophrenics. Hmm. And here, one day here, one day there, here the other, the other there, here and there. It's okay to have the spirit of God and God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's here in the office. He's there at home waiting for me. He's in the church where I can preach this afternoon. He's at the nursing home later on where I'm going to preach. He's everywhere. Amen. Uh, but he's not a schizophrenic. Amen. He's not going to tell you serve here and then tomorrow. Oh, no, I changed my mind. Uh, you're not going to serve there. You're going to serve over here. Amen. And a lot of times words out of my mouth is, well, God told me to. Mm. Well, God called me to serve here. And then God, well, you know what? No, no, God, no, no, God called me to serve over here. And and a lot of times we do that. But it's because in these difficulties that come into our life, we're not able to discern them as as a test, as a temptation from enemy. Right. And in right. other words, are you are you gonna turn that stone into a into a bread just to satisfy your needs or uh, for that moment? So Mm. The Bible says in Isaiah 41.10. Go ahead, Dr. Brown. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, aren't, aren't, you, aren't we blessed Amen. that we have a God that even in our difficulties, even ah, as, as God has called us, mm -hmm to serve in a ministry or God has called us to be a minister of this or a minister of that. And that means serving more than anything. Okay. It's not, I'm not even talking about the title. I'm just talking about completely That's serving, right. giving yourself to the Lord a hundred percent to him. You know, I teach, I teach the people, you know, the first thing I do, Dr. Brown, when, when I'm discipling somebody one-on-one, -on -one, which right now I'm up, we got six couples right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, six, working on our next one. Mm -hmm. Six couples discipling and a few singles that I'm discipling. This is my personal discipleship. Right. And, and the one thing that I teach them is, uh, what are you passionate for? What are you passionate for? Well, you know, you know, I go to, uh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking where you work. I'm not talking about your title. I'm not talking about how many kids you got. I'm not talking about if you're married or not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking you those things. I'm asking you, what are you passionate about? And sometimes, most of the time, uh, it, 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 there's a pause. Oh, yeah. There's a pause. Yeah. So my question to you, those of you listening to us here on 102.3 Radio Vida, La Estación Diferente, listening to us all over the world, including the DFW mm -hmm. here at the Live Fire Radio Show, what are you passionate about? Mm. I mean, what makes you get up in the morning and say, yes, I'm alive. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to go. Praise the Lord. You know, and then the next thing I identify, Dr. Brown, is their gift. Hmm. And 
and, and I do this because this this is this is the way that that God has led me to to where I'm at right now. Mm. And my passion was to serve. My passion was to serve Him. My passion uh, was to just see other people being served, and et cetera, et cetera. And so the the first gift I realized that I knew I had that nobody had to remind me to serve, but was the was the ministry what was the gift of ministry mm -hmm. which is to serve and when you put your passion and your gift together i tell people you will never work a day in your life mm -hmm. and a lot of people have changed careers because they've learned how to put these two things together there have been people that have changed a multi-dollar winning career to another career that perhaps is not making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Example, teaching. Teaching, you're not going to be rich. But you know what? Most of the time, when I meet teachers, that their passion is to see children's lives change Amen. and grow. Mm -hmm. And their gift is teaching. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know it. They mm -hmm. think they just went to school to teach. Mm -hmm. But they have the passion to teach the children, and they have the gift to teach the children. These are the teachers that I see that never go to work a single day of their life. And mm. they get three months vacation, paid. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is in your life, you got to find your passion. And then you have to know your gifts. You know, And I have a test that I take with people. It's a more or less kind of test. I mean, there's... There's plenty of tests out there that you can take. And more than likely, your spiritual leader can discern what gift you have. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're honest. But let's be honest, Dr. Brown. You ask somebody, hey, how's it going? Hardly are they going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but it, the truth will come out when you create that relationship with them. Amen. You create that relationship with them and you're able to see their passion where sometimes they don't even realize they have a passion for certain things. And then, of course, the gift will come out. You put those two things together. It will lead you to living your life on purpose. That's good. You know, how many of us live life on purpose, Dr. Brown, hmm. or for a purpose? Hmm. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that, that, that in life um, as a Christian is that you have a purpose. But you cannot find, you cannot operate in that purpose without your passion and your gift being one together. Mm -hmm. And then operating in that purpose. I'm telling you, you will live life on purpose. Mm -hmm. You will be living life for purpose. Mm -hmm. And then you will find yourself doing the will of God, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. you, will be, you will find yourself doing the will of God. And I'm telling you, that brings peace. It does. That brings peace. Now, here's what we're going to go into now. When That's why we read Isaiah 41. Because even in that place of peace, guess what? There will be difficulties, the Bible says. Amen. And the Bible says, look, Isaiah 41, 10 says, look, listen, fear not. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. He is with us. Mm -hmm. He is with you. He is in you. He's with you. He comes upon you. Be not dismayed. Another word for dismayed, uh, I believe, uh, kind of like do not fear, basically. Uh, don't be terrorized, amen, uh, in terror. Uh, what did you say, Dr. Brown? Dismayed? Yeah, dismayed. Mm -hmm. For I am thy God. You know, that's a word of affirmation right there mm -hmm. from our Lord. Mm -hmm. This is God telling you, hey, listen, son, listen, daughter. Uh, I know you're going through a very difficult situation. But I want you to know that, n number one, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Do not fall into terror. Amen. For I am your God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a word of affirmation for you. There's some of you out there that are searching for a word of affirmation from your loved one. You're, you're waiting to be affirmed by your pastor. Mm -hmm. You're waiting to be affirmed by your colleagues. You know, you're always looking for that affirmation. You know, <clears throat> your day will not go right if you're not affirmed at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, make the word of God 
your words of affirmation, Dr. Brown. Amen. You know, and the Lord is saying, look, listen, do, do not fear. Don't be dismayed. Number one, I am with you. Yes. Number two, I am your God. Yes. And number three, I will strengthen you. Yes. I will strengthen you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Your str- even in your weakness, Dr. Brown, the Bible says that in your weakness, my strength is made perfect, perfect. in your Amen. weakness. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and the Bible continues to say, not only <clears throat> is he with you, number two, he affirms that he is your God. Mm-hmm. In other words, he's claiming you, man. Mm. I mean, wow. Our God is claiming us, Dr. Amen. Brown, even in Amen. our mess. Amen. Amen. Even in our even in our attitudes that we get sometimes. Mm. Even in our loneliness, even in our in our bad judgmental state that we are in sometimes. He's saying, Look, listen, I am your God. Yes. And I will strengthen you. Mm-hmm. And then he reaffirms it. Yeah. I will help you. Yes. I will help you. You know, uh help some of us look for help in all the wrong places, Dr. Amen. Brown. I mean, how many times? I mean, I, I know you're very private with your with your students, and we don't we don't tell nobody's information. But in general, people are come are crying out for help. Absolutely. And they want to hear that 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 voice yes. of a human being. Yes. Why? Because they they I guarantee you, Doctor Brown, they have heard the voice of God. Mm-hmm. They just haven't recognized it. Yes. Absolutely. You know, remember when we were talking about Samuel? Mm-hmm. Woke up three times in the middle yes. of the night. I mean, this was God speaking to him, mm-hmm. but because he had never heard the word, he had never heard the word of God. He would, he would, he would, he would, he never recognized coming from God. So what did he do? He went to man. Amen. You know, and that's what happened. I mean, it, it, and you go, you go to your pastor, you go to your minister, you go to your leader, and your leader gives you a blueprint, Doctor Brown. Yes. You know, Moses gave the Israelites a blueprint. David gave his son a blueprint and said, listen, even God, even David said, I can't make the temple hmm. because there's blood in my hands. Amen. But guess what? I got something better. I got the blueprint. <laughs> All you got to do is follow this blueprint. This is not a blueprint that I'm giving you, son, but this is a blueprint from heaven. Hmm. In other words, when you follow this blueprint, Guess what? It's going to be blessed Amen. because it comes from the Lord. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. Amen. And then he says, yeah, I will uphold you. You know, that means uphold you. That means, guess what, Dr. Brown? In our difficulties, there's going to be times where we're sinking. Oh, yes. We're feeling like we're sinking. Mm-hmm. Like, I really messed this up. Everything's going wrong. Things are happening in my life. What did I do wrong? <laughs> Is it something I said? Is it something I didn't do? Mm-hmm. I'm not praying long enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not fasting long enough. Mm-hmm. What is it, Lord? What is it? What is it? What is it? He's saying, look, listen, hey, number one, do not fear. Amen. For God is not giving you the spirit of fear. Amen. But power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. For I am with you. I'm right here with you. Amen. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. Hmm. I will strengthen you. Yeah, I will help you. Yeah, I will uphold you. Like when Peter sank in the storm, hmm. he cried out to Jesus, and Jesus upheld him. Yes. And God says this, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes. That is Christ Jesus. Amen. So as long as we stay clung on to Christ, so how can we... How can we cling on to Christ, Dr. Brown, if we're following him in the distance? You cannot. Amen. Distance follower cannot cling on to him. Amen. We, we have to follow him closely. You know, one of the things my dad used to say, Dr. Brown, my dad was a fast walker. Mm. I mean, he would go from point A to point B. I don't know how he did it, man. He had very short legs. He was a short <laughs> man. But, man, he would just he would outwalk me. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he had a purpose. Mm. My father had a passion. Mm. He had a gift. He was living his life on purpose, whatever that purpose was. Amen. And nobody stand in his way because he was going to accomplish that purpose. Mm. When my father got up and went to work, I mean, he went straight to work. At work, he would work hard. He had a purpose to, to take care of his family. 
He had a purpose to be the best at whatever he did. Mm-hmm. And, and the only thing that my daddy lacked in those years was the peace. Mm. Because he was not doing the will of God. Wow. But the first three he got right. Mm. But the last two he didn't. Wow. And there was never peace in my, li- in my dad's life. Amen. Because he was unable to meditate on what was true, on what was pure, on what was praiseworthy. Yes. And he was unable to receive and to do the things that he had learned Amen. from God. Amen. And there was never peace in my dad, only mm. till he got to the age where, where basically he fell on the rock and he was broken physically mm. and he and he got saved. Amen. At the end, Dr. Brown. Praise the Lord. But many, many years of being very unpeaceful. So we say we say this to go to where we're going here about sitting down and counting the cost. Mm. Because we're gonna go into a little break, Dr. Brown. Okay. And then we're gonna come back and we are and we are gonna dissect this discipleship thing. Uh, because I, Dr. Brown's got a a, a a very good knowledge of discipleship. And uh I myself uh, put discipleship very important in my life. Amen. Something that I do personally. You know, it's got nothing to do with new life yes. per se, but yes. we do discipleship in groups. But then I also personally, personally, personally uh, yes. take time to invest in people's lives. Amen. Amen. And I think that's something that the church we need to do. Uh, yes, we got to build up the body of Christ, but let's build it up first spiritually yes and then the numbers will come i promise you the numbers will come but you're listening to 102.3 radio vida la estacion diferente number one show on the midday here the live fire radio show with dr brown and pastor beto Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope. It's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office.
listening to the Midday Live Show with Pastor Beto on 102.3 FM Radio Nuevo Comienzo, Fort Smith, Arkansas. The best Christian Tejano music and interviews with people that are making a difference in our community. Súbale! We 102.3. There we go. Radio Vida La Estación yes. Diferente. We are live yes. here this afternoon. You, Dr. Man. Brown, let's give some shout outs to the people here this Hallelujah. afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My uh my list is short, but greet uh Sister Margaret Knight. Yes. Pastor Diana Garcia hey. all the way from North Carolina. North Carolina in the house. Greet you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Carr with the with yes. New Life Kenya from Kenya. God bless you. Good to have you on. Brother Sean Rose. God bless you. Good to have you on. Yes. Uh, we saw Sister Leslie Sharp. God bless you. Brother Abel. In the house. Hallelujah. In the house. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's uh, Sister Janet Raccoon. Yes. Is in the house. Hallelujah. Uh, going and that's my okay. list. Okay, pues vamos a mandar un saludo para Norma Sanchez, Amen. Uh, Ana José Silvestre, Sean Rose, we said that also, uh, Ernesto Martinez, Eva Palomino, yes. Alejandra Silva, Alleluia. God bless you, mija, we love bless you. you. Bless you. Uh, District Attorney of Cameron County, Luis B. Sines in the house, thank yes. you so much. And of course, Prince, the Prince uh, Chopra, praise the Lord, glory Amen. to God, tuning in this afternoon on the number one show in the afternoon. The live fire radio show. So you know, it, it's always a treat. You know, uh, like we've been talking about discipleship as yes. we were off the air here. You know, and uh, not discussing no personal names or anything like that, but just in general, uh, people want to be discipled, Doctor yeah. Brown. But I, I think it's more in a one on one. It is more in a one on one, and uh, that's why I still do individual prayer counseling. Mm. Because most of it is about discipleship. We deal with issues. But, uh, it, again, untangling a web yes. that the enemy has set up in their mind. Amen. You would be surprised at how many people are confused yeah. about salvation and this walk. Oh, yeah. And until you present the gospel and declare the truth of the word of God, uh, then, you know, our... Uh, discipling is yeah. not effective. No. And so, yes, one-on-one, because yeah. you will find when people come from other places and backgrounds and whatnot, mm. there is a lot more confusion yeah. than you, than you yeah. ever dreamed yeah. of. Yeah. You know, I, I think one of those is that they can do whatever they want. Yep. You know, and then they come into to a place of discipleship, and, and they come in there with a big old ball of yarn. Yes. You know, and I tell them, look... You can't give me that ball of yarn to me mm -hmm. and let me untangle it for you. Mm. You're going to have to hold one end, and then if, if you're married, let your, your husband or your, your wife hold the other, <laughs> and then we're all going to untangle this it. carefully. Yes. And one of the things I tell people, and they, and they laugh because they say, look, it ain't going to happen today. I'll just tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, really? it ain't going to happen today. Right. Uh, it's just not going to happen today. I, I'm just I'm going to be honest with you. Yes. It could, it could, but but more than likely, you got a mess. Yeah, <laughs> you got a mess. Right now, I'm walking yeah. some folks through, yeah. through you, the, uh, you, first John, yeah, first, second, and third John. Good, you know, and they said we never heard this mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, of what I yeah. know and see. Yeah, so to disciple them, mm. this is a whole family. Yeah, I had to walk them through the word. Yeah. to untangle the lies of the enemy. Amen. So they can embrace the truth. Right. Amen. It is going to take a minute. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's it's that is that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Is that fruit that's been that's been swallowed and eaten. Right. You know, and now we now the consequences. It's not like you can just shove your hand down their throat and pull out that piece of fruit. I mean, it's already gone in. It has. It's already been digested. It has. And now it's it's already wor working in the body. It's all over the blood system, all over the nerve. I mean, it's everywhere, Dr. Brown. And, and now they're going to have to eat the true. Right. Out of the other trees. <laughs> don't, don't, huh? Does that make sense? Right. But don't you think, Pastor, that's also because of 
of uh, that's just like we we have children if you have a child mm -hmm. and you never spend time quality time quality time yeah. and imparting into that child and you leave it to itself yeah uh to watch tv oh, yeah. to go out in society yes and uh that child grows up then oh yeah He'll grow up exactly what he's been seeing. Exactly what yeah. he partake of. Absolutely. So that's a lack of, amen, Participation, us. parent participation of raising a child. Absolutely, yes. yeah. Yes, or, or Or maybe it could even be where they're putting a lot of quality time, but it's not quality time. It's not. It's quality. worldly quality time. Exactly. You know, exactly. I, I mean, we, I've, I know some parents that encourage cussing. Yes. Encourage children. drinking. Yes. I mean, they encourage it. They they encourage dancing in some Come on. awful ways, man. Yes. I don't want to see no eight-year-old girl doing that. Are you crazy? No. no. What are you doing to your children? That's uh, so. That, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Go may, ahead, Doctor. May I say this? Please. It's, it's, it happens also uh, in in the body of Christ. We are so busy trying to figure out how to entertain yeah. that we're not uh, uh, really giving enough of what, what Jesus is all about, what, yeah. what, what he is. And I know this because, you know. We've I, all I, been in it. I, I, I've seen it set yeah. before I, I'm me. glad that I got myself out of that real quick, Dr. Brown, but, but we've all been there. Yeah, it's good. I'm not saying fellowship is not no, good. No, no. But I great. need I need you to inspect and check the fruit yeah. to see what they know or were there are 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 they getting anything? Mm -hmm. You know, don't tell me I had a good time yeah. at youth group. What did you do? What did you learn? Yeah. They can't tell you anything. Well, yeah. we we did this and we did that. But what did you learn? What did yeah. you learn about the Lord? Yeah. Did he minister to you? Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh one place that we have to uh take a check. Yeah. And and put a little bit of a choke chain on yeah. it, amen, to stop them thinking they're coming for a uh, a time of play date. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, you yeah. got to have uh, uh, your time in balance Yeah. where you give them, uh, do you understand, and make sure that you're imparting. There's their num number one relationship, of course, with the Lord. Amen. Number two relationship with your family. Amen. And uh, then, of course, number three, you can you can go ministry occupation, ministry occupation. Obviously, you need to occupy your time so that you can get paid, right? I mean, in mini I mean, if you're gonna do ministry, it's gonna cost, right? Amen. Even financially, but Amen. Uh, but you know, and, and these things happen to where, you know, uh, the body of Christ. I'll say this is dropping the ball. Absolutely. Because uh, we're we're not discipling one another. No. You know, well, you say, well, pastor, well, I need to be discipled first. Yeah, I understand that. But you can disciple somebody with the little bit that you know is good enough Amen. to to create that relationship. And even in that fellowship, we're not talking about, well, go fellowship and just go to the movies, but fellowship to where, hey, you know, let's, you know, let's pray about certain things. Let's talk about your testimony, how God brought you Thank here. You, and Jesus. And let, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is amazing. Mm. You would be surprised, church, what the Holy Spirit can feed you mm. so that you can give out at that moment. Mm. Amen. Amen. I That's mean, at that moment, just statement. just uh, uh, putting yourself in that position, in that place uh, where you are, where you are uh, ministering to somebody, the Lord will give you. Uh, the words, what to teach about, what to talk about, he will give them to you at that moment. You will be surprised what Amen. the Lord can do. Amen. So, so you know, we we going back to this because we're talking about discipleship, but uh, everybody, you know, we need to live out Titus chapter two. Ah. Titus chapter two, Doctor Brown, mm. is where the church is lacking. Mm -mm. You know, and, uh, you know, listen, if if you're telling me you've been at church, even if you've been in a church for a couple months, you know, some people just got born again recently. And I'm telling you, they just got born again recently. I'm seeing them just getting to the word, Dr. Brown, mm -hmm. and they're already lear learning the word very, very quickly. 
and now they're able to dis- to to disciple if if you maybe you're not discipling a sister or a brother et cetera, et cetera, but guess what you got children Amen. I'm Amen. telling you you got children and guess what your children your children are going to tell you and oh, no, here we go again we're going to church again right. I mean you know I mean it, 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 there's a balance Dr. Brown Absolutely. There has to be a balance. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, don't burn them out. Mm. It's like everything. You can burn them out in, yeah. in doing the things they yes. love to do. Yes. I yes, guarantee yes. you. Hallelujah. You know, so you just gotta you gotta find a balance. Yes. You gotta find a balance in your children and teach it, or otherwise, uh, they're gonna pay a price, mm. like my son did. Amen. For lack of that quality time, spending time with him, mm. especially at that age between eight and teenager. Yes. And those are the, the years, man. If you don't spend Crucial that quality years. time there with them, is when they're starting to know uh, their identity and their, their, their character and their, their image of God. You know, can you imagine they're growing up without knowing the image of God that we're created in and, and in their likeness? And, mm. and they don't have no one to follow and no one to affirm them and. And no quality time. In quality time, even in quality time, you, you can find out a lot of time. It's not just, you know, happy, happy, happy. But even in that quality time, uh, th- there could be some very deep discussions Absolutely. about some character that is that is coming up in a child. And, and you got to diffuse it. And you got to diffuse yes. it now. Yes. Amen. So so quality, so quality time isn't always just good because, like, I, like we were saying, there's some quality time. People are spending too much quality time, Amen. and there's no quality in it, Doctor Brown. No, but uh, no. but uh, so we've seen this in our discipleship, and listen, church, Jesus was very clear about this. I, I I don't know I don't know how clear you want him to be, but he said to preach the word of God. Mm-hmm. Number one, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to preach it. Yes, you got to be the light of the world and the salt of this earth. Amen. Or else you're good for nothing, the Bible says. I mean, my Lord, I, I mean, it, I'm, it's not me being mean. It's what the Bible says. Absolutely. And so you preach the word. And, of course, through, through words, through actions. And the Bible says the gospel is not just words, but it's power. power. You know, Jesus, the, the Bible says that the, the, that the, that the, that the dove, uh, the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to understand that, that he was already empowered. And he was empowered yes. by his obedience, yes. amen, because amen. he was the son of God. Uh, you and I, because of our obedience to the gospel and believing and having faith in the gospel, the Holy Spirit empowers you. Yes. Without the Holy Spirit, you're not empowered. Amen. You're not empowered to pursue. You're not empowered to to persevere. You're not empowered to be diligent. You're not empowered to preach the gospel. You're not empowered to to preach, to disciple, to teach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, without the Holy Spirit, the the Bible is very clear. You're empowered to preach the gospel, to set the captives free, you know, to speak life to those that are dying. I mean, all these things is through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible is very clear. It's not just preaching, but it's discipleship. Mm-hmm. You know, my Lord, so many brothers and sisters in the church and i've seen this dr brown Mm -hmm. you go out perhaps to the movies or you go out i don't know to the store or to an event Mm -hmm. and and and, in 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 all that time spending with your with your brothers and your sister never was there a time of discipleship Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a disciple is a learner Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're discipling me, I'm learning from you. Right. I am following you as you are following Christ. Amen. Now, I tell people, you know, don't follow me home because <laughs> you, you might be disappointed, you know. Praise the Lord. But, but as I'm following Christ, yeah, follow, follow. me because Amen. I'm going to teach you some things. Amen. So that you can use what I'm teaching you. So that you can teach your children, yes. so that you can choose one person mm-hmm. and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to disciple you. I mean, and most of the time, Dr. Brown, it doesn't happen that way. No. I mean, discipleship yeah. isn't like, okay, I'm going to disciple you. Right. That's not the way it happens. Right. Okay. It, what it means is in that relationship, in that fellowship, in that breaking of bread, in that prayer, in that 
uh, uh, continuing in the apostles' doctrine, mm -hmm. you form moments where you're discipling. Right. You know, where you will find areas in that person where their garment is wrinkled mm. or their garment is spotted. Mm. And that's a great time to teach somebody, this is the way. Mm. Follow me. This is the way. You know, uh, judgment, we always say that judging isn't with a gavel, but judging, judging is an, ex an examination. Mm. You know, we are to examine one another. You know, so anyway, so so this is one of the things that that I really have a big passion for. And and, and if we want our church to be strong and our church to grow spiritually. OK, the numbers will come. I promise you. I mean, and look, listen, uh, I just had a meeting this morning with pastors and and we're looking at some statistics nationwide. And I'm telling you, the numbers are low mm -hmm. in giving in attendance. Mm. I mean, we're living in the end times, church. Yes. We're living in the end times, man. Yes. You know, I'm here to tell you, and, and if you cannot be an apologetic of your of, of, of your gospel, uh, in other words, if, if, you, if, you, if you can't defend your belief, that's it. They're going to eat your lunch. Yes. They're going to eat your lunch. Amen. And uh, now's the time to disciple. Mm. Now's the time uh, to, 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 to get, to, you know that one person that comes to church once a month mm -hmm. and or maybe comes to church twice a month but you always running into this person what are you waiting for yes. that's your opportunity absolutely for you to disciple you know you got your notes that you've been learning you know sunday mornings you got your notes on wednesdays mm -hmm. you got your notes on wednesdays you got your your notes on sundays you got your notes on your personal devotional. You got all these things. Now it's time for you to give mm. so that you can create an overflow. And That's once good. you create that overflow, I guarantee you, God will give you more. Amen. He will give you more. But in order for us in Christianity, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, hey, we got to sit down and count the cost, Dr. Brown. Come on. We got to sit down and count the cost because... I tell people, look, discipleship, Jesus didn't follow the disciples, Dr. Brown. Yes. I mean, Jesus wasn't telling Peter, hey, Peter, where are we going? No. Hey, John. Hey, sons of thunder. Where are we going next? All right. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> These were men, first of all, that were handpicked by Jesus and said, follow me. Mm. Leave everything you have and follow me. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, being a disciple, you're being a disciple of Jesus Christ, man. You're going to have to sit down and count the cost. And guess what? Even like Isaiah 41.10, yes, he's, he will be with you. He will help you. Even in times of difficulty, he'll be there. Mm. He will hold you up. Amen? Mm. But guess what? Jesus was affirmed. He was empowered. And then Satan tempted him. Mm. So ma many of you are, are going through uh, through an area of testing, and uh, nobody told you it was going to be easy. At least I know I didn't. I know Dr. Brown sure didn't tell mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy, mm -hmm. you know. But I'll tell you what: in this in this season, you know, Pastor Jonathan preached an amazing service uh, on Sunday, mm -hmm. talking about we yes we go to God. We're in the time of need, absolutely good, but uh, stop asking him to take away all this pain away from you you know i mean there, 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 there's some times and i'm talking when i'm talking about pain i'm talking about difficulty what if this difficulty could be the greatest thing in your life amen you know what can you learn from this difficulty what can you learn from that difficult brother what can you learn from that difficult marriage what can you learn about this difficult time not being able to pay your bills what can you learn about this difficult time in your career what can you learn about this difficult illness that you're going through what can we learn from this, Dr. Brown? Praise the Lord. You know, how can God get us, you know, as, as, as we are weak, we know that his strength will be made perfect. And, and, and as we continue, to, Paul continue to ask the Lord, you know, take this, take this scorn off of me. Like, take it off of me, Lord. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. Yes. My grace is sufficient, son. 
I mean, you're putting your focus on the wrong thing here. Come on. You know, you got to put your f- eyes on me. Mm. And even in this difficult time, guess what? I'm teaching you some things. Yes. Some things that are necessary for you. Yes. Because even Jesus, on his way on the cross, you know, the, 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 the people ashamed him mm. so that we were not ashamed of him. So, I mean, let's go to, let's go to Luke 14 finally. Verse 25, Dr. Brian, this is a discipleship test. Amen. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So let's stop there a little bit, Dr. Brown, because we, uh, we, we got to explain this scripture in context. Yes. And tell the people, because people will come up to me and say, well, I mean, I mean, how, how does God want us to hate, hate. Mm-hmm. you know, our, 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 our mother and our father? And, and God is a God of love, but now being a disciple is, you know, you have to hate your loved one. Well, that's not what the Lord is saying. Mm-hmm. That's what the that's what the world will say mm-hmm. when you become a disciple of Christ. Just because of of the I believe that in the context of this scripture mm-hmm. that when you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, you know, it it, it creates a space mm-hmm. between God and, and, and your next love, which would be your family, your wife, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That, that space between the father and perhaps your family, let's just say that, as it increases, Dr. Brown, look at this. As it increases, it fills the void that is in you. Amen. Amen. So, so you want that void. You want that space. I'm loving God this much and loving your family right here. It doesn't mean you love them less. It just means that this this space that you're creating mm-hmm. will be able to fill this void that is in your life. I, I, I've got to show me that. That's good. Pastor. That because I used to have a huge void, Dr. Brown. Hmm. You know, of course, I love my mom. Of course, I love my daddy. Of course, I, I love, you know, my family, et cetera, et cetera. But I had them even even ahead of God, yeah. you know, and and, it, and and now it created this huge void because I never received affirmation, mm-hmm. maybe because of my bad behavior. Mm-hmm. There wasn't affirmation. I mean, my my daddy wasn't going to say, man, you're a good young gentleman. You know, I'm very blessed to be your daddy. I mean, I, I didn't give him any um, any reason to say that. Uh-huh. So what what he told me and what I heard he was saying was just awful things. Mm. And, it, and it created this huge void in my life. But what if you find that affirmation from God? Yeah. And, and, and you create a space that is sufficient to fill your void that life has created. Maybe through abandonment. You know, mm. maybe through anger, jealousy, pain, uh, abandonment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, to be God's disciple, Christ's disciple, the Bible says, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Uh And, And I have a small definition here on my notes here Mm -hmm. talking about hate not his father and terms in which define the emotions or affections are frequently comparative natural affection is to be as compared with the christians devotionness to christ as if it were hate Uh, matthew 12 47 to 50 where christ illustrates this principle in his own person but in the Lord, the natural affections are sanctified and lifted to the level of divine love, Dr. Brown. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, like I said, 
the way when I first read this scripture and the way God shown it to me is, for instance, my mom calls me right now and, and she needs me to go to the store. My Lord, I will leave this show if I have to. Right. That's the love I have for mama. Mm -hmm. But the love I have for God makes me a better son. Mm -hmm. You know, that great love that I have for my for my father, God. Right. For right. The, my Lord right. Jesus right. Christ. The more I love him, the more I would be willing to die for my brother. Mm. The more I'd be willing to do anything for my mother, for my daddy, for my brother, for my sister. But when you narrow that space between the love of God and your brother, now, guess what? You, you're not going to love your brother as you love yourself. And to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, guess what? It increases your love, number one, for yourself and for your neighbor. Because if you don't know how to love yourself, it's because you don't love God. That's true. I mean, we were made in his image, Dr. Brown. That's true. We're made in his likeness. So guess what? I'm going to do everything possible not to harm myself. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to make better decisions. I'm going to do greater things, great, better things that are going to be good for, for my Lord. And guess what? I will love my neighbor as I love myself. Mm -hmm. Dr. Brown, I know you're looking for, you got some notes there. You want to say something about that uh, verse. You know, I, I, I believe also yet this verse about the hate, uh, th this extreme example that is given by our Lord and Savior uh, to really have us to uh, get attention to know that is just that crucial mm. or that important yes. for us to love him, to be uh, his disciple, is to be willing to see ourselves in that fashion right. more than uh, what, uh, you know, we could take this literally and say, well, Jesus said, hate your mother, hate your father, hate, you know, what he's saying is an example yeah. of how desperate the situation is that you cannot be his disciple. In other words, amen, praise God, uh, that we are willing to sell out to follow him. Yeah. Amen. Give up any and everything. Let me take you back to Genesis where Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. And Isaac was taken up. Yeah. Right. Remember? Yes. For a sacrifice, mm -hmm. amen. Right, right. And and of course there was a ram in the bush. Yes. But is is that is that still yet yeah, that same example? Yeah. That we see now, and I'm I love saying that, that. I'm love saying that. that because you have to be willing to wow. follow Jesus, That's really good, to trust right. Jesus, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, right. Even with your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your children, mm. you got to be able to trust Him. Hallelujah. You can't save them. That's right. No, you can't. You can't. You cannot save them. You can't. We don't have the power That's for right. that. So he says, you cannot be my disciple until you make a decision. That's right. Until your decision becomes, I give it all up to follow you. Yes. Amen. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me what a great example my disciple what a great example dr brown of, of, of isaac i mean uh here's here's a man of god abram that 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 through his faith he was made righteous unto yes. god right yes and here's a man that left everything you know when, yes. when he when god told him to go and, and, and he went by his faith he was considered righteous unto God, and yes. and then and then uh, years and years of praying, or or or, or that 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 the angel of the Lord had come and promised him that he would be a father, even at that age. I mean, right. even Sarah laughed, yes, which was which was the nickname of Isaac, laughter. Hallelujah, Amen. And that's the joy of the Lord. I mean, the yes. joy of the Lord. There's laughter, yes, and, and laughter. It is it is medicine for your bones. I mean, glory to God. Right. And then you have the Abraham waking up early in the morning, setting up. I mean, the the, the whole caravan of people. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like he was gonna put there a couple logs and. And, and just set him up. I mean, th this was a big old altar yes. that was, he was going to, I mean, it, it was, th this was really 
putting himself everything loving God that much yes. that he was going all out and doing this sacrifice, this yes. altar on the top of a mountain, Hallelujah. amen, Hallelujah. getting up early in the morning, getting yes. up all his men and all these animals carrying all this wood. And the Bible says that, that Isaac, when they got to the foot of the mountain, Abraham told these men, he said, I, we will be back. I believe he said that. Yes. Let, let, yes. Let, let, he let, said let, yeah, he said, he said, he said right here, let, let me look for it. He says, uh, and then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place. Yeah. And he saw it far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with the donkey. And I and the lad will be back. We will be back. Amen. Yes. We will go yonder and worship. And come again to you. Yeah, you're talking about faith, doctor. That's man. some kind of faith. I mean, he's taking his son, yes, the one that God had given him, and now God is asking him to sacrifice him. Yes, Amen. But but the Lord said that He would provide. Yes. So he's going there with this expectation that God is going to pr provide this sacrifice. Yes. You know, as God asks us, like in the in the book of Luke. And telling us about if any man comes to me and hate not his father yes. and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yeah, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. Here's Abraham going there with his mind uh, and the flesh pulling him down. Yes. His spirit compelling him going up. Yes. Amen. And now he's got his son, the one he loves, uh, the one he adores. It is, it is, it is, it is the one that came from the woman promise. that he loved, the mm -hmm. promise, right? And and now he, he he's starting to see. Okay, I don't know where this sacrifice is gonna come. You know, are we willing to love God that much, Doctor Brown? Yes. You know, and and that's the space that you create between God and your brother. That's going to that's going to give you peace. Amen. You know, because if you love God this much. Yes. Guess what? You will be able to love your brother that much. And you'll be able to allow yeah. your son to stay in prison for two years. That's right. That's you, right. Uh, yep. Yep. That's, that's right. A sacrifice. Oh, yeah. That, absolutely. That, that, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. We're we're so quickly to want to change mm -hmm. destiny and oh, whatever yeah. the plight may be. Oh, yeah. But you got to love him enough. Yeah. To be his disciple, to trust him and trust his word. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. That's right. To sacrifice to to. And, and yep. I'm saying that oh, because yeah. uh, Absolutely. when situations come, amen, praise yes. God, we don't want things to happen. Oh, we don't no. want to see, amen, that side yeah. we call the ugly side or the yeah. side we're counting up the cost yep. as to what, what's going to happen. Yeah. But here, even. That's right, Dr. Brown. Yeah, we see. That's right, Dr. Brown. From the scripture in Genesis, yeah. even, the Lord God, I'm here. Yes. I, I give it to you. And we, we got to get in that place. I mean, can you imagine what the young men were saying among themselves? He's taking his son to sacrifice. I mean, I don't see. He, he didn't take no goat. No. He didn't take no ram. No. I didn't see no ox. I mean, we really don't see nothing. What is he going to sacrifice? I mean, he knows he's taking wood up there and, and Abraham's got the fire. Right. I mean, these young men aren't stupid. No. I mean, they're looking at Abraham and saying, man, he's about to sacrifice his son. Yes. He really loves the Lord. Yes. If he loves the Lord, then in that much, wow! Can you imagine what he can do for mankind? Yes, you know. So, yes. so I think I think the 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 love of a father, mm. you know, because I I got questioned in my uh, relationship with my son. You know, my son spent two years in prison, and uh, there was time where I had to kick him out, Doctor Brown. Yes, it was like it's my way or the highway, and that's just the way it is. In my house, you, you're not gonna be acting like a fool. And in my house, you're going to go to church. You want to live in this house, you're going to go to church, period. That's just the way it was. Right. Period. Right. My son didn't understand it at the time. He didn't want to understand it at the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He knew I loved him, but he also respected my decision. Yes. And he went out there, and he did what he had to do, this and the other. And, and I got a lot of phone calls, I, and I, I, you know, a lot of statements from people, never face-to-face, -face, but you can hear it, right? 
and saying, well, what kind of love of a pastor what is that? Of, right. What kind of love of a daddy right. is that? Right. Well, I had to I had to believe, Dr. Brown, that God was going to provide the sacrifice. Glory God to God. God was going to provide it. Amen. And Amen. that and that walk was only between me and my son. Yes. It didn't involve nobody. Mm, come and on. listen, there's there's some walks up there that you guys are going to have to start to take mm. that it doesn't involve your pastor. It doesn't involve your congregation. It doesn't involve anybody else, but it's between you, you and, and that person or the, or the Lord that you're going up that mountain. And mm. even when people uh, cannot believe, yeah. amen, that, that, that you're making this decision, right. but you have faith that on the other side of the mountain, yes. God was going to provide and he was going to provide that ram and it was going to be just in time. Amen. Exactly. I mean, God's never, er I always say God's never early and he's yeah. never late, it's but always he's always right on, on time. time. So, I mean, I, I hope that, 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 and that's a great verse right there, Dr. Ron. If mm -hmm. I would ever preach this, if I preach this message, I will preach it with that scripture. Amen. I will put Amen. those two together because that just, you can see it. Yes. That's the love that we have yes. for the Lord. That obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. That obedience that as Abraham's going up the mountain, he is literally a disciple of God. And he is literally a man that is coming to God and hates his father mm. and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yeah. And his own life. And he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not carry his cross. Yeah. And come after me cannot be my disciple. What Die a what a what self. a great what a great uh, Word. uh well, yeah. I mean uh, I'm trying to find out the uh what a great moment to sit down here and count the cost. Yes. I yes, mean be, be, right go ahead Dr. Uh, 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 at the end that verse that he was just talking about where the father talked uh, uh, Jesus was saying and whoever does not bear his cross. Amen. Praise God. Uh, that is deny yourself. Yes. Uh, that self sitterness is not about you. Right. Amen. And what you want to do, bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Right. Bear your cross, your suffering, the trials. Yes that you would go through and he says then you can't be my yeah. disciple. And and that disciple is a learner. Yes. So so you got to let go of all these things that you've been taught. Yes. You know, I I, I know your daddy taught you some things. I understand and Hallelujah. and your coach taught you some other things and your parents have taught you other things yes. and but God is saying, "Look, listen, those things that you've been taught, listen, now you got to start to learn from me. Yes. And, and everything else got to be second be, yes. behind me. Hallelujah. And I have to be your priority. Yes. To the world, to your family, it's going to seem like hate. Yes. But to me, it is love. Yes. And as you're going up that mountain and you're about to feel like you're sacrificing your own family, in reality, is your faith. It's exactly. your faith in me that's going to that's going to fulfill your righteousness, amen, that amen. you will be filled with righteousness because at the end of the day, God is not early, God is not late, but he's always on time. Always on time. Always on time. And uh, hopefully we, we explained that pretty good. We, we spent a lot of time on it I think because I think it's one of those scriptures, Dr. Brown, that, that is very difficult to teach. I think you it know, is esp too. Especially in the world. Exactly. Even the people in church. Yes. Uh, they read this scripture and they, they don't want to touch it with a 10 no. foot pole. You got to leave everything. They, they don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. But I'm Amen. telling you, man, because the church doesn't touch this scripture with a 10 foot pole is the reason why we're at right now. Amen. 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 And uh, and we go back to this now where Jesus is continuing to speak. On verse and, he, and, he's, and he's laying it down. I mean, he's laying it down right here, talking about the next few parables, about counting the cost of discipleship because as we come to the lord i always tell people look you know this may be untheological untheological but i've seen it there's a difference between a christian and a disciple yes and and if i would choose any scripture it would be many are called but few, but few are chosen amen and because a disciple 
are chosen by God. Amen. You know what I tell people? I tell, I tell people this. I say, I say, look, listen, listen. I listen to the Lord, and I hear him calling you to this ministry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, either I'm a buffoon, <laughs> buffoon. or you're going to make me one. Mm-hmm. So stop making me look like a buffoon. <laughs> because I'm listening to the Lord, and he's calling you into this. You already told me you've lived a life and you've messed it all up. Now you've come to a place in your life where you are willing to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. It's come out of your own mouth. Mm. So now the Lord has allowed me to see your gifts, has allowed me to see your passion, your purpose, your future, your destination, all these amazing things calls you to a certain position or a certain ministry and then when things go difficult difficult now you choose to quit hmm. mm. I tell people look listen stop can you please stop proving your pastor wrong <laughs> and start proving the people wrong praise the Lord you know all these people that are saying no th- pastor there's no way that person can be in the prayer team why do you got that person in the prayer mm. team Oh, Pastor, how can that person be leading the usher? It's like, look, listen. I tell people, look, listen. Look, this is what's happening. Prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. Amen. Prove them wrong. Amen. Stop proving them wrong, right, and stop proving your pastor wrong, please. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Anyway, that was a personal announcement <laughs> to those who hear. But here, but, but here are the, the, the parables, and Christ is starting with the discipleship, Dr. Brown, start, uh, talking about the tower. Verse 28. Verse 28. Yeah, 13, 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Let's stop right there. Uh You know, now, here's Jesus. He's already explained it to them and said, okay, first of all, here's the first test, 25 to 27. He said, I'm going to teach you about discipleship. But the first test is, okay, do you really love me? Remember, Peter? Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do you really love me? (laughs) Well, Lord, you know I love you. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, three times, and, of course, Peter just breaks. Mm -hmm. Because he, uh, he obviously knew that Christ wasn't asking him for an answer, but he was asking him, Basically, okay, can I trust you? Mm-hmm. You know, okay, can I trust you, Peter? Um, and then, and, and you know what's beautiful about that story, Dr. Brown, is that here's Peter gets gets rekindled with the Lord and basically forgiven. And after all the following him from a distance and denying him and cursing, yes. you know, he, he's welcomed back basically, right? Mm-hmm. And then what's the next thing he does? He points to his brother John and says, what about him? <laughs> Isn't that uh, a, a classic move of us Christians, man? Yes. You know, we're going through our difficulty, but your brother over there is getting blessed. And, and we're saying, Lord, but what about him? My you know, Lord. just stay in your lane, mm. church. Stay in your lane. <laughs> For which of you intending to build a tower? And, and obviously ministry yes. is serving. Yes. And the gift that is given to the body of Christ is to what? To edify the body of Christ. Yes. These gifts are given to us either personally, the fivefold ministry, the personal gifts, all these gifts that the, that the Lord has given us. And it's order for us to build something, mm. to, to build it up, mm-hmm. to edify it. Amen. And which of you, before you start to edify uh, your neighbor or, or before you're going to build something, I mean, if you're going to build a house, uh, you would hope that you have some kind of plans or a blueprint or yes. or you have the enough materials or the enough money in the bank to finish this project. I mean, you don't want to be living in a in a slab, you know, with with empty walls in the wintertime. I mean, you would freeze your family to death. And I think that's a lot of times how how uh, men and women go into ministry, Dr. Brown. Mm-hmm. They go in just enough to just start the slab. And they put up these empty walls and then they're standing in the middle of the foundation, you know. And, of course, they say, well, how come nobody's allowing me to lead them? Well, no, 
Well, nobody wants to be under a roof with no roof. <laughs> uh, so uh, you got to intend to build the wall, and you got to sit down right here. And, and this is very, a lot of maturity, Dr. Brown, happens here. Yes. Because anytime we get an opportunity to, uh, to build something, uh, the majority jump in. I've seen it. Yes. I've seen the hands go up. Right. You know, uh, at New Life Church, you sign, uh, you know, you sign a paper saying if you join a ministry, that minimum, you must do that ministry for a year. I think a lot of people forget that. Mm. You know, so their yeses become no and their no's become yeses or mm. et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you, you got to sit down before you, you act upon a ministry. You know, we got people that are depending on you, that are depending to see your face. You know, you tell them you love them. Mm -hmm. You tell them you're praying for them. And then one day to the other, you're not there no more. Mm. So, I mean, that 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 question is a lot of character. Mm. Um, but you got to sit down first, Dr. Brown. And God's giving you a blueprint on this tower that's got to be built. You know, that's the parable of it. And number one, you got to sit down first. Mm -hmm. Sit down first. Separate yourself from your emotions. Yes. Separate yourself from this encouraging, you know, sometimes you're in the service. You, you talk this about, about being in the service. The lights are out and you got lights and you got music and right. and, and you get all emotional, right? All right. emotional, right, right Dr. Right. And then the lights go on and the, the music is starting. You're like, oh, my Lord, what did I just say? Yes. What did I just do, right? Right. A, a, a lot of pastors do this or, or people that are miss, miss uh, that are doing it in the wrong way, but they, they get you all emotionalized about giving as well. They set up an atmosphere, right? Uh, and then the lights go on, and you're like, oh, my God, I just gave my mortgage to my house. Or, <laughs> yeah, be very careful. Sit, sit down and count the cost, count amen, the cost. first. And count the cost. In other words, this is what's going to cost me. To follow Jesus. In order for me to follow Jesus, it's yes. going to cost me everything. 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 Yeah. Who, whosoever Losing does not me. bear that's, his that's cross it. and come after me cannot be my disciple. Amen. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life, also, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. That's the cost. Are you willing to pay that cost? Amen. You say, man, Pastor, you know what? Right now, I'm I'm not able to I'm not able I'm not able to pay that cost right now. It's okay. Sit down. Amen. Sit down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, be the, be 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 learning. Be be continue to be learning from your brother, from your sister. Get into the word. You know. Start to learn. Start to start to go into this wilderness because in this wilderness you're gonna you're gonna be taught a lot of things. Mm. So that when that opportunity comes, no man, you know what? Uh, okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna follow Lord. Yes. I'm, I'm gonna follow Him regardless, yes. regardless because this wishy washy thing, this this sit, sitting on the fence thing, uh, this is costing my soul. Mm. It's costing my soul. And, and you know what, Lord, uh, you, you've given everything to me. Uh, you, 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 everything I have is because of you, my health, my, my, the wisdom that you're giving me, the knowledge you're giving me, the understanding, uh, this passion of mine is to serve you. Lord, I'm ready. I've counted the cost. Hallelujah. And the cost is everything. Everything. That's it. That, that is it. Everything. Now, that is it. everything to me, Dr. Brown, is different than your everything. That's true. Right? Yeah, that's true. When I came to the Lord, Dr. Brown, I had nothing. Mm -hmm. So when I said, Lord, I give you everything, really, I didn't have nothing nothing to give him. But mm -hmm. guess what, Dr. Brown? As I follow in him, God is blessing me. Mm -hmm. And and he's blessing me also with, with some material things. But those material things is nothing I want to hold on to. Uh. That's, that's not what I cling on to. What I cling on to is being obedient to the Lord, following Him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my might. And and but you gotta count this cost, whether He have sufficient to finish it. Yes. Do you have sufficient love 
to finish this walk. Mm. In other words, is Christ in you? That's sufficient. If Christ is in you, the Bible says that God is love. Yes. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength that you may that you may love that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those two verses right there is your test for you to know if you have sufficient to finish this journey, mm. to finish this race. And absolutely, absolutely, Peter said, uh, I do not look back. Mm -hmm. But what do you say? But I look forward. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to look forward and not look back? Because when you look back, Dr. Brown, mm. it will hold you up. Mm. The Bible says that, uh, talking about uh, 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 the man that was called. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that called, Dr. Brown? The plow. Mm -hmm. What, what? Hands, to the plow. Hands to the plow, right? Uh, the, help me out with that verse. Look back, that's Amos. Yeah, the, he, the, the looking back is, is not worthy yes. of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Amen. So when you hold on to that plow, to the cross, which is Christ Jesus, and you hold on to it, but you keep looking back, then you're not worthy. That means that you, you still have something in your heart that is making you look back there. Mm. Same, the same theory... That verse, you can align that verse with Lot's wife. You know, Lot's wife looked back. Number one, she was, she was disobedient. She was disobedient. Number two, there was things back there that still were attached to her heart. Mm -hmm. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, yes. meaning she had lost her taste. A pillar of salt loses its taste because it's no longer being used yes for the for the for the for the tasting of food or for the yes. for the um what what what's it called what is to the preservment Preserve. of something yes so it's a pillar of salt uh -huh. it's not preserving anything it's not bringing taste to anything mm -hmm. it's lost its taste and it was good for nothing amen, amen. you got that verse right there dr Brown? yeah and luke 962 Amen. It says, but Jesus says, said to him, No one having put his hands to the plow mm. and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. No one. No one. No one. No one. I mean, Amen. that's another discipleship tested. Yes. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, you, you think God won't test you? The cost of this. You know, I made it very clear last night, like, listen, the, Satan will tempt you, but God will test you. Mm. And you got to be able to discern the test and the temptation. Mm. Because when temptation comes, God gives you a way out. Yes. That's the difference. When you are tested by God, he is the way. You got to follow him mm. with all your heart. He, if you turn back and you let go of that plow, what's the Bible say, Dr. Brown? It's oh, not worthy, it's not worthy. Of, the not of God. of the kingdom You're of God. You're not fit. You're unfit. Mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah. It, it, it's, it's a really tight word. Yes. Uh, when we count up the costs, and uh, people came up with different songs uh, uh, that they sung about yes. leaving all to follow Jesus. Yeah. And uh, then... I think as time went on, we began to compromise the word of God. Right. Amen. And, and decided that, uh, you know, the meaning of it, we changed it to, uh, uh, again, to uh, uh, compromise and enhance the things that we wanted. Yes. Our flesh desired. Yes. And so... In this word, which is a tight word, leaving all to follow Christ. Yes. And he described the description of it. Even in that uh, chapter I just read out of Luke 9, 
Uh, it talked about uh, when one asked him, say, well, I got to go home mm-hmm. to bury my father. Right. Oh, and yeah, he yeah, yeah. declares, let the dead bury the dead. Yes. Amen. Very and, similar. And, yeah. and, and yes. But what, what I'm getting at is, is Jesus is very clear on what he's talking about. Yes, he is. Amen. When he's talking about following him. Yes. Amen. Praise God. You got to have that hunger and thirst and desire for him again to trust him with the things he has allowed us to have yes. to be a blessing unto us. Yes. To trust him again back into uh, 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 Genesis mm-hmm. with Abraham. Trust him enough amen to to be able to come and just sacrifice all That's to right. follow him amen trusting him that, that that he 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 does know us absolutely he will take care of us yes he will supply our needs yes he will make a way for my escape mm-hmm. amen trusting him enough to dropping it all to follow him to count up the cost the cost is Everything. Everything. And we we can't get away from that. We can try. We can uh, humanize yeah. it yeah. and say, no, the Lord knows my heart. He knows that I'm yeah. something that, you know. Wicked we, and we, evil. We, he knows yeah, your yeah, heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Amen. But yeah. it is that when we set down and count up the cost, it's costing us everything. Yes, yes. To follow him. Absolutely. To follow him. Amen. You know, I, I just, as you're, as you're talking about that everything, and, you know, the, the devil's tempting, but God is testing. And if you're not able to discern it, Dr. Brown, Amen. Uh, you, you can think that, that, that a temptation is a test and that a test is a temptation. And you're not able to discern those two. And Jesus, Jesus knew this was, this was temptation from Satan. And the Bible says in Luke 4, he says he fasted for forty days, yes, and 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 was tempted of the devil, right. And in those days he ate nothing, right. And when and when they were ended, he afterward he hungered, yes. So now he's in a place of hunger, the flesh, and that's where temptation came, yes, at your weakest, yes. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God. Command this stone that it be made bread. Now, yes. you don't think God knew he was hungry? Absolutely. Ah. I mean, you don't think that God knows that we're hurting? Yes. You don't think that God knows our pain and and our and even perhaps even our anger yes. and our hurt and, yes. and, and and whatever you're going through? You don't think that God knows that that you that you are so hungry right now for a touch of God right. and, and you feel like you've been going through this test period. And this and the other, but now the devil is tempting you, and he's tempting you for you to turn this thing around and for you to please your flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Yes. But Jesus answered him and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. And of course, then the devil comes and tempts him. Uh, two more times, yes. and I love what the Bible says, and I believe in verse 13. Come on. And when the devil had ended all temptation, yes. all the temptation, that, that means that there's more to come. Ha. He departed from him for, for a, a season. season. What season are you in? <laughs> what season are you in? Are you in the season where you are going to receive the victory? Are you in this season where you are going to discern whether it's you're being tempted or you're being tested. Listen, when you're being tested, know this, that he is the way. Yes. When you're being tempted, knowing that he will offer a way. Amen. There's a difference. Yes. When you're being tested, burrow through it. He Amen. will empower you through your difficulty. When you're being test, when you're being tempted, then... God provides a way out, the Bible says. And that way out is Jesus. Amen. The same one that will be testing you, but not the same one that is tempting you. Amen. Amen. The enemy tempts, but God tests. What season are you in? You're listening to the Live Fire Radio Show here at uh, 102.3 Radio Vida, La Estación Diferente, 95.5 Nogales, Veracruz, 99.7 Guanajuato, 87.7 Guatemala. 
91.9 Radio Compañerismo, Rio Grande Valley. Thank you so much for making us the number one show here in the DFW. Muchos saludos para todos los que están escuchándonos. Let's give some shout outs here this afternoon before we leave. Saludito para Lupe Gomez. Saludito para la pastora Diana Garcia. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Drew Hastings. God bless you. Margaret Knight. Pastor Valentin Salinas. Uh, mi amiga uh, Diane Infante. Uh, I know this young lady since, woo, since we were in junior high, Dr. Praise Brown. The Lord. Uh, saludito para Chris Anton. Para Glenda. Yes. Para Bartola Perez, Lupe Gomez, yes. uh, da, 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 and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people tuning in Amen. this afternoon to the number one show on the midday. Hallelujah. You're listening to the Live Fire Radio Show with Dr. Brown. Say bye. Praise the Lord, everybody. May, may I decree a blessing yes. over you. And I counsel the assignment of the enemy that would try to come against you. I declare that you are blessed going in and coming out. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless Saludito you. Saludos para Chris, Christy Alaniz. Bye bye. Pamela, God Sube. bless you. We'll see you tonight. 790 Windbell Circle, building number two. New Life Church here tonight at 730. En el nombre de Jesucristo. Sule. Look for Starbucks coffee in a grocery store near you, then sit back and enjoy the exceptional taste of Starbucks. Y esas canciones se las quiero dedicar a mi papi. Aquí yo sé que muchos han escuchado de Eliezer Moreno, y pues él ha escrito todas esas canciones para que nosotros las pudiéramos cantar. Así es que bueno, pues le seguimos en las rancheras. Y nada, nos puede apartar de ese amor, ¿verdad? A ver, dime tú, tribulación. Angustia, persecución, hambre, desnudez, peligro o cuchillo. ¡Vamos! 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 un grito por una ventana. Y es como la gente